guys, it's Julia and welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my October wrap up. up here I have Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. So this is about a girl named Ramona who lives in Mississippi and she's a lot going on in her personal life right now. She feels very certain of who she is. Um, she lives in a trailer with her father and her sister and her sister's pregnant and then along with Ramona she has um, bright blue hair, long bright blue hair and she's identified as a lesbian for a long, a little while now. When she meets a guy she kind of starts to doubt who she is again and just with all the other complications going on in her life this just becomes a lot for her. So yeah that's what this plot is about. Julie Murphy I think last month or the month before and I like got it signed and everything so I'm so happy I got it signed because I hadn't read it when I went but now that I've read it I love it so much and something that people don't know about this is this actually deals with her King Critch Hurricane Katrina, why can't I say that? I loved this so much. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved it so much. I thought it was amazing. The characters and the writing were amazing. Like I didn't want to stop reading it. I didn't want it to end. Um, and that's always a good sign. It literally crushed some gender roles. There's a representation for a person of color and for a bisexual rep in this book as well. So that was just really nice to see. I can't speak on those two things. Like I can't speak on them. Um, but from my knowledge, like she's educated. Plus she is a, she is a bisexual author. So this is own voices for her and that in that specific category. So yeah, um, I love this a lot and I would highly recommend it. Next up here, I read a poetry collection and I read Bone by Yursa Dali Ward. This I was super excited for because I kept seeing it everywhere. It has very high Goodreads ratings and I thought this is gonna be really good. And the back says, you will come away bruised, you will come away bruised, but this will give you poetry. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll buy it, I'll read it. I didn't like it, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so basically, I only liked a few poems in this, which not a good sign. I didn't like the writing. Parts dragged. There was just so many things that were just overly described, like pages of poems. Like I remember these poems are pretty like stretched out too sometimes and I just couldn't get into it at all. There also, I wanted to mention this, I don't, it didn't have to do anything with my rating, but there is a religious element, which I thought people would want to know about. So that's in there. Um, so yeah, I gave this two stars and I thought I'd love it, so it's pretty sad. <laughs> Next up here, I have The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Kaur, which this book I thought I would hate, and I loved it. Um, my opinion on Milk and Honey, if you haven't heard, I gave it like an okay rating. It wasn't my favorite, and especially from all the poetry I've read now, I still don't love that Milk and Honey that much, and I know some people love it, and I'm glad you loved it, don't get me wrong, but um, I wanted to pick up her new book because I love poetry, so whatever I can get my hands on, I'll read it, typically. and this was so amazing like I was so impressed from like this dealt with so many important issues this dealt with heartbreak to rape to immigration to police brutality it talked about a lot of important topics it just loved the overall message and I thought it was just so well written and well talked about so yes I gave this a solid 4.25 out of 5 stars and I would definitely suggest it and if you didn't like milk and honey I think you will quite enjoy this one we're gonna undo my jacket because like I'm warm and I still have my runes on because they refuse to come off in the shower. So I don't feel like scrubbing them, so they're there. Next up here, I have The Godfather by Mario Puzo. This book is a mafia adult book, and it is about this guy who is the Don. His name is Vito Corline, Cor Oline. Literally everyone told me pronunciation, but I got like 20 different pronunciations, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so Corleone. Corleone? I tried. Sorry, uh, this basically is about, it deals with, it's just so complicated and I've talked so much about it. I made a whole entire book review, so I'll link that up on the screen, but I loved it a lot. It was great and I gave it four stars. <laughs> then I read Sun Disappointing Reads. So I read Road to Riverdale, which I think people were kind of pissed off that I didn't like this one because on one of the videos I talked about it, it got a lot more dislikes than my usual videos, so I, I think this is why. Um, basically, this is a what it says it's a Riverdale comic if you haven't watched the show you should it's a good show um but I read the first and the second volume of these because they had a sale on them so I bought them and I didn't like them I think I'm not trying to bash like the original Archie comics guys I'm bashing these because <laughs> I think like 
I wasn't, I don't know. Okay, not the point. Writing, not the writing. The art in this one is absolutely beautiful, like A+, plus, like great, but the story lagged, it was jumpy, it was cringeworthy. It's this dog narrated it with, I love animals, like don't even try to tell me like that I don't love animals, but this was so juvenile that this whole thing was narrated by this little dog and I'm like, you, like it wasn't cute, like just leave. And then in the second one, the art, lacked and I believe the first one it was either the first one or the second one that had uh, Fiona Staples illustrating which I love those parts because she's a great illustrator she illustrated Saga um, but they were just boring like I didn't care and it was really disappointing I gave them both two stars they probably deserve less but then I read some good things so I read Dead Man Wonderland 7 through 10 um, this is a great series it's about a boy named Ganta who goes to a prison after his whole class is murdered and he's the only one that lives so they automatically assume you are the killer you're the only kid here and yeah um, sent him to the Dead Man Wonderland prison which is a amusement park kind of looking prison it looks really weird um, but people go to watch entertainment from the prisoners so they play games that end in death and everyone just watches and chills and it's like cool let's kill them I don't know uh, but these are amazing I love this series so much I just recently got 11 through 13 which are the last ones and then I have to wait like each year for them to be released which is so sad <laughs> but these were amazing I love them um, it was 3.75 4 4 and 4.25 so these are great I'd highly recommend this series especially if you want to get into manga up here I read Slasher Girls and Monster Boys edited by Genevieve Tuchoke. Basically a big YA anthology full of horror short stories that all range from different topics from like paranormal to murder to this to that. This was surprising to me. Like for some reason I didn't think it'd be that creepy because it was YA. <laughs> Not that YA books aren't creepy but I just didn't think it'd be like horror like so scary because I don't know adult doesn't scare me so I'm like why it can't scare me which this didn't book didn't scare me but there was some solid stories in here that I was really happy with it's for Carrie Ryan's um Megan Shepherd's Kristoff and Mary Lou they were fantastic one of the stories I think it was Carrie Ryan's was about Alice in Wonderland and I still think about it like it was so interesting to me so definitely pick this up it was a lot of fun and I think certain stories in here are fabulous some are not so great but a lot of them I was just generally surprised at the whole collection I was like these are pretty darn good so I ended up overall giving this a 3.5 just that's just what my average came out to be but I would suggest it if you're interested for like a spooky kind of read last but not least we end on a bad note so this is another one that people might be upset about but whatever um the dreadful tale of prosper Redding by Alexander Brocken I didn't like it at all. I ended up DNFing it 75% of the way through, which guys, I read 75%, like don't, don't come at me. Um, but I gave this one star. I thought it was disappointing. I thought it was juvenile. I thought the story was going nowhere. Like literally the first few chapters I knew, like, I hope this gets better because it's not going to be a good writing if it doesn't, which it didn't. Like, I know the ending was starting to pick up, but I couldn't care less about these characters, about this plot. There barely was a plot to me. Like, a lot of it was just there. Like, I'm like, I don't care. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't suggest it. I don't know how, like, a middle grade... I don't know how, like, a kid could pay attention to this, because I was bored. I was bored. And I pretty... Ha I have a pretty good intention span, too. And with reading, I'm pretty patient. But this bored me so much. Nothing was happening. Mmm. It was just underwhelming. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. I gave it one star and I DNF'd it 75% of the way through, but I guess it just wasn't for me. I don't know. But my thoughts on the books that I read this month, I know with some of them I didn't like them, so please don't be like, oh my god, you hate my favorite book, unsubscribe, blah blah blah. Like, dude, suck it up. People have different opinions. Dude, girl, whatever. I just say dude link like, off of uh, instinct, but like, come on. Everyone has different opinions, so keep that in mind. Um, but that was my October wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's see you very soon in the new video. Bye.
instead 